Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course organic farming and today we will discuss about the biofertilizer, the key component for organic agriculture. We have known that we have defined the organic farming is a practice of agriculture where we cannot use our inorganic fertilizer or pesticide or synthetic food additives, plant growth regulators. So, we have to give the nutrition to plant through organic means. There are different type of organic sources of nutrients. We can apply manure, we can apply compost, vermicompost, green manuring, green leaf manuring and some other organic source of the nutrients. And over the years we have seen our population is increasing and our now we have in the global population is more than 7 billion, so that is 700 crore and India itself we have 130 crore population. So, we have there is a great challenge to feed this huge population in near future and simultaneously we have seen when we are using inorganic fertilizer for particular some high nutrient exhaustive crops in some belts of rice wheat cropping system, every year we using enough fertilizer. So, what the consequences? Our factor productivity has been declined, soil salinity has been increased and also there is a health issue of the soil. So, there is a also consumer awareness about the food quality. So, there is also people are wanting some pesticide residue good quality organic food. And so, there is a market not only in our domestic, but internationally the organic market is increasing is more than 20 percent per year. So, there is a need to promote also organic farming for definitely for some high value crops and also in some particular areas where farmers are already using very less amount of inorganic fertilizer and pesticides. So, that our conversion will be easy, probably northeastern part of some hill states is better suited to go for organically in this way. Whenever we want to also apply different type of organic manures, the amount is very high. Similarly, for giving only 50 kilo of nitrogen, we need about 110 kilo or like that urea fertilizer. But to provide the same amount of 50 kilo nitrogen through organic means, we have to apply more than 10 ton per hectare FOM. And this when you are going, 10 ton is a huge amount if you go for a large area under the organic farming. And this, there is some limitation of this organic manure. It will be costly to transport and also application by our laborers. So, what is the other alternative where we have not to carry to very vast amount of organic manures to our field? In this consideration, bio fertilizer, bio fertilizer has a very significant role to provide nutrients to the plants. There are a lot different type of bio fertilizers. Bio means the living organisms act as a fertilizer. So, they are either I will discuss in my lecture what are the different types of biofertilizer, what is the define and concept, how they are fixing or mobilizing or solubilizing some nutrients so that they helps in the giving the nutrition for their better growth and quality. I have just divided in my lecture in the several part introduction, what is the definition of biofertilizers and what is the role for soil fertility enhancement, what is the different types of biofertilizer or maybe nitrogen fixing phosphorus solubilizing and mobilizing and also PGPR that is plant growth promoting rhizoberia. And after that we have to also want to know, we know this is the biofertilizer types. Now the major concern is how to we can produce or culture in our labs, so that we can produce mass production and we can supply different parts of India. And wh ultimately what will be the process of the application of this biofertilizer in the soil, so that maximum benefit a farmers can get. So, the growth in agricultural production in the last three decades has been accompanied by the sharp increase in the use of chemical fertilizer. When we are using the excessive fertilizer, it degrades the quality of the soil as well as the quality of the water. In this scenario, biofertilizer keep the soil environment rich in all kinds of micro and macronutrients and they are doing different type of nitrogen fixation, phosphorus and potassium solubilization release of plant growth relating substances and also 
they are also produce some type of antibiotics and biodegradation of organic matter in the soil they are helping. So, in our natural system within our planet, there are thousands and thousands of different types of microbes, some may be harmful and some may be beneficial. So, for our organic farming point of view, we have to identify which are the microorganisms who play a very eminent role for the beneficial, for nutrient supplementation, maybe nutrient mobilization or also the different other so a gifitings are different type of secondary metabolites and others. So, if we see microorganisms, how much microorganisms is exist in our garden soil and you will be just amazed to know simply in a just only typical garden soil in the depth of 3 to 8 centimeter only per gram basis, only per gram 9.8 into 10 to the power 6, it is mean about 90 lakhs near about to 1 crore bacteria present only in 1 gram of soil. Similarly, if you see the actinomycetes is there, there is lots of about 12,000 fungus and also the algae, this all exists within 1 gram of soil. So, our soil is a reservoir of this bacteria, actinomycetes, fungi and algae, but most of this bacteria, fungi or whatever the microbes is there, they are not beneficial. Some may be harmful, some may be we not yet known what is their role, it does not mean they are providing a role, but probably our science is not so high, we have not got role whatever the existing different type of bacteria or protozoa is there. And if you see most of these our organisms present in the surface soil, you see the highest amount is whenever go always in all the cases in the top soil 3 to 8 centimeter depth, whenever and you go to the lower side deeper soil layer their population is decreasing. So, our majority of this nutrient in the top soil layer and that is very much important. Our agriculture most of the crop growth which is annual in nature, vegetable may be your rice, wheat, they are root mostly concentrated in the top 10 to 15 centimeter or up to 30 centimeter. So, what this means, these microbes play a very important role to provide the different types of source of nutrients and how much we can harness or exploit these microorganisms for our agricultural growth, that is the question. You see what is the function of the different type of soil microbes, the decomposition of the organic residue of release of nutrients, also formation of beneficial soil humus, release of plant nutrients, improve plant nutrition through the mycorrhizal relationship, transformation of the atmospheric nitrogen to the available nitrogen in case of rhizobium bacteria where they form the nodule and can fix biologically nitrogen and also they also help the soil structure, soil surface in the their improvement of the soil aggregation, soil stability. If the soil aggregation is good, then if there is too much rainfall or too much high velocity wind, our erosion will be low. So, they not only provide good nutrients in the soil, but also they promote and also they modify the soil qualities in different way, so that that will be better and decline of the soil fertility will be less. Sometimes they are also against different type of insect, pest and diseases. Plants in organic farming, we cannot use different type of insecticide and pesticides. So, we have to always go for this type of some microbes, which play some role, so that the, our insect and pest attack in our farming will be reduced. So, if we just divide two type of soil microorganisms, one is beneficial and second is the harmful. Under the beneficial system, there is nitrogen fixers, decomposer of organic waste, detoxifying the pesticides and also different type of hormones, vitamins and enzymes and I have already told how they are improving the soil aggregation. Similarly, there are some microorganisms as harmful, they may be soil borne pathogens, there are lots of in pest and disease attack in the plants, most of their pores or their germs keep in the soil. So, whenever we are growing the next crop or the same crop in the next year, these they help to again infect the plants. So, in this condition always in organic farming, we try to advocate the use of crop rotation. If this year we are growing suppose rice, we can grow next year soybean or maybe groundnut or maybe some other crops. So, by this process, we can reduce the population of this harmful microorganisms and we can enhance the population of our beneficial organisms. So, what is the definition of this is the bookish definition? It is the preparation containing live 
or latent cell of different strains, nitrogen fixing, phosphorus solubilizing or cellular lighting microorganisms used for application or seed or composting. So, biofertilizer these are living organisms. When we are using this living organisms, we are culturing artificially and we are applying along with the seed or maybe in spray or in the soil with a aim to enhance the crop growth and productivity, they are called the biofertilizer. There are different type of biofertilizers, mainly they are bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. And there are different types also, some is nitrogen fixing, some is phosphorus solubilizing, some is mobilizing, some also help in the potassium solubilizing. So, in the second part of our lecture, in the next few slides, I will describe in details what are the different type of biofertilizer and they how work in the close proximity with the plant's roots. The role is the soil fertility enhancement we are showing. There is nitrogen fixing bacteria. Among the nitrogen, there is different types of rhizobium, azospirillum, azotobacter, brugin algae, azola. And if we see how we are, this is the plant, biofertilizer are present in the roots. This helps in the nitrogen fixation and also solubilization. So, all these nutrients is easily available to the plant growth. So, when these are easily available to the plant growth, the plant growth is better yield will be better and also sometimes they are reported to enhance the quality of the food and that is very much important organic farming because consumers are always ready to pay some higher price for their quality produce. So, they have also role very much in the soil fertility management. If you see different type of biofertilizer is there, certain if you I just classify the biofertilizer, someone is nitrogen fixation, someone is the phosphorus solubilization and someone is the potassium and we know these three in, in, in nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are most important in higher amount. And most of the farmers are using only these three fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer, urea, DAP. For phosphorus, he may be use single superphosphate or DAP and for potassium mostly use is the MOP that is muriate of potassium KCL. So, even we by using this type of biofertilizer and we can reduce the amount of the fertilizer demand or fertilizer use in our India, we not only save too much of money and energy, but also we promote some better ecosystem services, our environment will be better and our soil quality will be maintained. And among the phosphorus solubilization, after that different type of plant uptake, it improves the root hairs and architecture, also improve the water uptake and that is very much important. When because in case of our rain-fed agriculture, where is there is no facility of the irrigation, a farmers need these types of things which the promote a sufficient amount of water can be supplied over a period of time. So, that is not only help in the nutrient supply, they also enhance the production, enhance the supply of the water over a period of time for a better plant growth. So, if we see what is the biofertilizer and target crops, these are very much specific. One biofertilizer may be very much specific to a particular crop and we cannot expect that biofertilizer to work for the other crops. Jax rhizobium. Rhizobium is a bacteria present in the root, rod, root nodules of the leguminous crops or pulse crops. So, this rhizobium bacteria is present in these crops like chickpea, lentil, pea, black gram, mug bean and some other crops, but this is not available in the crops of cereal or rice or wheat. So, if we apply rhizobium for the rice or wheat, so there will be no use. So, they are very much host and specific. Similarly, azotobacteria, they are free living, they can grow for wheat, maize, cotton. Similarly, azospirillum can use for the cereal crops. So, we have to always very much particular which type of biofertilizer we have to use for which crop. Similarly, bee glen will give for rice, why there are some phosphorus solubilizing microorganism, this is PSB, they are not so specific. They also makes plant and, or, or, and complementary with different type of plants, maybe horticultural or agricultural. So, their specificity is not narrow, that is too much wide. So, if we see the classification of the nitrogen fixing bacteria, first is the nitrogen fixing biofertilizer, one is free living, they can live freely in the soil and there is no need of association with the plants. So, this is azotobacter clostridium, similarly one is asso associative. Azospirillum. They need some specification with some plants, but there is no synergistic. While in case of symbiotic, rhizobium and anabina azoli, there is a symbiosis. Symbiosis means when two plant species or maybe two any microbes, they growing together. 
and they also help each other. In the case of rhizobium or bacteria, they form the root nodules of the legumes. Legumes provide food to the rhizobium. So, for food, rhizobium has not to be a worry. The bacteria is getting food, source of energy, everything from the plant. And what he is doing? He is fixing the nitrogen biologically and giving to the plant back. So, there is a close association between them and this is called symbiosis. Similarly, under phosphorus solubility of bacteria, some are fungi that is bacillus and pseudomonas and some are bacteria and some are fungi that is penicillium and aspergillus. There is also phosphorus mobilizing bacteria. There is the difference between phosphorus solubilization and mobilization. Solubilization means phosphorus is already there in the soil and it helps to solubilize to make it some complex form to some easily available form so that plant can absorb. While in case of mobilizing, this is not solubilizing or enhancing the increase the quantity. It may be present in some other parts of the soil where the root cannot directly reach. So, they are helping the root hair to reach that particular point and uptake of the nutrient. Also, there is different type of biofertilizer for micronutrients like silic and enzyme and also the PGPR that is plant growth promoting rhizobacteria for pseudomonas fluorescence. And this is the pictures of different types of microorganisms. You see this is the rhizobium when they enter into the soil in the root, in the root hair there is carving and whenever they enter they are multiply like anything, they form some specialized cell and after the specialization of the cell they form this type of small, small nodules. If you uproot the plants of this leguminous crop, you will see this root nodule is there and this is the source of the nitrogen fixation. And you have to see if the color is little bit whitish or grayish, matlab, that means your nitrogen fixation is less, it is not so much active. But if the color is little bit pinkish or reddish, then nitrogen fixation is high. Why? Because there is some compound is present just like in our blood, we have the hemoglobin, they have also there are some same type of compounds within their cells, so they give the color. Similarly, there is also different type of cyanobacteria, azospirillum, azotobacter, Fracturia, Pseudomonas, Bacillus and Herbosculus Mycorrhiza. Our question is that how effectively we can identify the quality attributes of these microorganisms, how we can culture, how can we mass produce and after that how we can apply in our soil or seed for a better growth. This is the response of yield of some crops over the years we have done. There is different type of result, lots of thousand research has been done. In case of rhizobium, the yield response is 4 to 139 percent. So, this is huge. Maybe in some crops we are getting 10 percent enhancement of yield and increase of more than 100 percent. And the cost is to give just only one or two packet of rhizobium in the association with the seed while we sowing. There is no other needed, only you mix this rhizobium with the seed and apply in the field in the time of sowing. This enhance the multiplication of this bacteria in the soil, they will fix biological nitrogen and they help the crop growth. And they not only help of the growth of that crop, because whenever we are applying these things, most of the soil nitrogen is stay in the soil. They also help the crop which is growing after this crop for that also. Similarly, we have done different type of experiment for azotobacter, the response is very much from 0 to up to 55 percent. So, this biofertilizer play a very prominent role without investing so much, without giving too much amount also just organic manure, we have to give 10 ton, 15 ton, their less is very, maybe few gram, 500 gram, 1 kilo, 2 kilo and the yield response is very good. Similarly, we have also work out of what the response of different type of vegetables for the biofertilizer inoculation. And if you see, somewhere we are getting 14.9 percent, in case of chili we are getting 26 percent while in case of onion we get 21 percent. Similarly, in case of rhizobium for P we are getting 13 percent and also for azotobacter somewhere we are giving very less to 9 percent to 24 percent. Even a 20 percent increase of crop yield or 10 percent increase of crop yield with just applying only 500 or 700 rupees per hectare, this is a tremendous achievement. They are, and they are always, there is no side effect, they are always helping the plants they are helping maintaining the soil quality and they always also enhancing the yield and quality of the produce. So, if you see this is only for nitrogen. Now, what is the for phosphorus? 
Phosphorus, I have already told there are different type of things like PSB, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. They are also applying along with soil or in the seed in the form in the organic farming. And they are also up to 50 percent we have got result for pumpkin and also for AM that is Arabusculus mycorrhiza we are getting up to 20 percent of the potato. So, all these microorganisms are playing a very important role not only the agricultural crops like cereal, pulses or oil seed, but also for the horticultural crops by vegetables and fruit trees. And we have to always promote this type of biofertilizer cultivation in case of organic farming when we apply cannot apply inorganic fertilizers like urea, otherwise MOP or DAP or on different type of micronutrients. So, always we have to rely on this biofertilizers. Now, the classification. Now, we are detail what are the different type of biofertilizers. One is the nitrogen fixing bacteria. So, by the name itself, it means they are fixing the nitrogen. We know in our atmosphere about 78 percent nitrogen is there and place take up nitrogen in the form of two form they can take either ammonia or they can in the form of nitrate. So, whenever we give any fertilizer also, they have to go certain biochemical process and they have to make either ammonia that is NH3 or we have to got nitrate form. So, these two are only plant can take whatever we are applied. So, in case of biological nitrogen fixation, there is too much nitrogen present in the air more than 78 percent, but we cannot use this gas directly and put in the soil. But this rhizobium bacteria has a tremendous power to reduce this nitrogen and form ammonia. So, from gaseous nitrogen they are producing the ammonia, this is process, but this is process is not so easy and there is need of lots of energy for reducing one atom of nitrogen to ammonia they need 16 ATP molecules. Because this nitrogen bond is very much strong, they are able to break the bond and they are fixing the nitrogen from the atmosphere to the soil. So, they are sometimes of we can tell a miniature industry where they are fixing the nitrogen, they are producing the nitrogen fertilizer organically. If you also see different type of example is there are different type not all are things some if I have already told symbiotic when there is a symbiosis plant gives the food to them while they are getting the nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen they are fixing and giving to the plant back. So, they are living in association. And they are also different types of rhizobium. Some rhizobium species may be very much particular to pea, but that rhizobium may not work for the other crops like lentil. So, they are very much host specific. Also, there is some tree species is also there. Some rhizobium also is in the tree in the jungles like elder, casuarina, and they are also fixing too much nitrogen. Also, if you see there are some is free living that is aerobic. Free living means there is no need of any association with plant they can stay within the soil by their own and there are very much essential they are very much prominent in the natural system in the grassland in the forest we can found there is some is aerobic so they need constant supply of oxygen that is azotobacter measuring skia cyanobacteria some are facultative facultative mean sometimes they need oxygen but sometimes they need also that oxygen supply should be less so they are in between the anaerobic and aerobic and that is Clevisella pneumonia and Bacillus polymyxa. There are also certain types of this type of organisms of nitrogen fixing, they are anaerobic. So, for their function, oxygen limit supply should be limited, only they are functioning well, like Costeria, Chromatium, and others. And also, there is some associative, they are taking place within some plant, their association with some plant, but what is their role? how they are helping to each other is not yet known. Not like the rhizobium and nodules plant where they are helping each other with providing some nitrogen or food. They are only staying together, but their role whether they are supplying any nutrient or other it is not yet known. So, this is the rhizobium miloculation we know, this is the root nodules and whenever to given the root nodules, these are the fixing nitrogen and the rhizobium leaves in the root hair after then they, they can fix from 550 to 300 kilo nitrogen per hectare. The range is huge. If we apply a 100 kilo nitrogen per hectare, it means there are more than 220 kilo of urea we can save. And for this production of urea and other things, too much energy, diesel and other is needed. 
So whenever we can produce or we can promote this type of rhizobium inoculation in our all the type of leguminous crops, our burden of the fertilizer recommendation will be less and also that is very much needed for the organic farming where our use of this inorganic fertilizer is restricted. This is the asymptotic symbiotic azospirillum. Just like the rhizobium, they also can fix and they are as first recorded by the benzerines. They are mainly found in the cereal plants. Previously, I have also told whenever in case of rhizobium, they are mostly growing in the leguminous plant. So, that is I am telling nature provides for everybody's need. For leguminous plants, they, how they fix nitrogen with the help of rhizobium. So, for leguminous species, rhizobium is there. But for the cereal, there is no such association. So, nature provides also different type of things. This is the asymptotic symbiotic isosperilum. They present in the cereal plants. So, they can also produce uh, work with cereals, millet, oil seed, and also produce not a high amount like rhizobium, but 20 to 40 kilo nitrogen per hectare they can provide. And this is not a very less amount. 20 or 40 kilo nitrogen per application per hectare also has a very tremendous role to enhance to grid by 25 to 50 percent. But you see, 25 to 30 percent of the nitrogen fertilizer can be saved by this azosperilum. Even we can the reduce the amount of nitrogen fertilizer by 5 or 10 percent, this is a remarkable achievement. And here they can have the capacity in their full optima potential from 25 to 30 percent. So, we should always promote use of this type of bio fertilizer in our agricultural systems. This is the free living vector. They are not associating with plants, they can live freely within the soil. They are heterotrophic, so they are taking nutrients from different types of soil, but they are mostly present in alkaline and neutral soil. When the soil in the alkaline soil, when the pH is little bit high, more than 7, this is called alkaline and neutral soil is 6 to 7.5. So, within this pH, if within they work from 6 to 7.3 and more than 7.3. So, in this area, this type of free azote vector working well. They are not working very much well in condition acidic soil. Similarly, they also supply 20 to 40 milligram of nitrogen for one single gram of carbon. So, they are also very much efficient and these are nowadays commercialized. IPCO company, you know, just Indian Federation of Farmers Cooperative Organization, they are producing the azotobacter and they are selling in the market. It is easily available in the market and also every time in organic farming, we are advocating our farmers to use this type of bio fertilizer in their field. Second is the free living aerobic that is blue green algae. If you see the color is blue green, this algal nature and they are also present in our natural system. There are different types of algae is there, but there are the certain species which can fix nitrogen in a better way as compared to the others. More than 100 species of BGA is there. So, we have to isolate and identify which type of blue green algae they fix more nitrogen. So, they are also has the ability to both photosynthesis and the nitrogen fixation. They have also very good water holding capacity and some nutrients you see. They are applying nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon and trace element. So, there is very much important of this BGA. Some BGA can naturally grow, they present in the soil or in the and sometimes in water they are association with some other plants like Ajola pinata. So, if you see this is the free living different type of blue green algae and they can fix different type of fresh at 30 kg per nitrogen per hectare. This is a very good amount. Suppose a particular nitrogen 100 kilo per hectare is dose and 30 kilo is supplied through the only one species with the BGA. So, how much fertilizer consumption through our India and through our globe we can reduce. So, we have always promoted this type of free living aerobic bacteria, aerobic cyanobacteria that is blue green algae and also there are different other species Eleusia, Tulipholix, Psychonata, Nostoc, Anabina and Pictosima. So, now I will work on the phosphorus solubilizing and mobilizing microbes. Previously, I have mostly done with the nitrogen type of fixing, there are different type of nitrogen fixer. Phosphorus, there is no type of such types or is fixation, but some microbes helps in the phosphorus solubilizing and mobilizing. Phosphorus is a major nutrient required for the growth of plant everyone we know. There is lots of plant growth and metabolites activities depend on the phosphorus and if you show the acidic soil in India a major area of acidity mostly the hill soils in the eastern part and the northeastern part of India are acidic. 
where phosphorus is very much deficient. So, what will be the different type of role? And if you see in organic condition, if you are FYM, they are also little bit less in phosphorus. So, in this condition, we have to always promote different type of phosphorus solubilizing and mobilizing plants. So, a group of fungi associate with the roots of the higher plant and they can also help the mobilization of the phosphorus. First is the solubilizing so that whatever is not available to the plant roots, they can come to the easily available form. And second is the mobilization. The phosphorus is present in some later distance from the root, but how they are helping this phosphorus to come to near about the root so that plant can absorb them. In this slide, we have discussed what are the different type of roles a phosphorus solubilizing microorganisms play. Say they are stimulating the nitrogen fixation, they are also different type of biocontrol of plant pathogen. They also produce some antibiotic needed for the plants. They also help in the soil aggregation and soil stability. And they also increasing the accessibility of some trace elements like iron, zinc, molybdenum and copper. So, these are not only help in the form of phosphorus solubilization and supply of phosphorus to the plant. They have some secondary role also for availability of the micronutrient, probably resistant to plants and some eye attacks and also the antibiotic preparation. So, there are a different type of microbes, solubilizing microbes is there. Some, if you know, the phosphorus is very much being fixed in the soil. In the acidic soil, the phosphorus is fixed in the form of iron and aluminum phosphate, while in the calcareous soil, due to the high concentration of K, calcium is resulting in the phosphorus concentration. So, in both the cases, either it is may be acidic soil or may be it is alkaline or calcareous soil, our phosphorus becomes deficient. Also, phosphorus is present, but plants are not able to use them. Only in the neutral condition of the pH, when the pH is about 6 to 7.3 or 7.5, phosphorus solubility is little bit more. So, in this condition, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria play a very prominent role by helping the solubilizing of the phosphorus and uptake by the plant crops. This is the different type of classification. One is two bacteria, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria and second is the phosphorus solubilizing fungus. So, bacteria and fungus both are actively associated and this is the bacillus, pseudomonas, these two species under the bacteria and these three main species aspergillus, penicillium and trichoderma, they are applying with for the phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. And also see how the phosphorus now we are coming the mobilization. Previous part I have discussed how the phosphorus is helped by the use of this phosphorus solubilism bacteria for solubilization maybe some complex form is there and now it is easy to uptake form which plant can take. So, that is phosphorus solubilization. Second part is the mobilization that is they are not making the complex materials to some easily soluble form only they are helping to the plant re root to reach that person. The mycorrhiza was first used by the German researcher A.B. Frank in 1885. This is also a symbiotic relationship. If you see this is the plant root and this is the different type of microorganisms. This is the mobilizing. Where the plant root cannot reach this association, the fungi, plants are helping by giving this, them to keep place to shape. They are also giving food and in the other way how they are helping, they are make some different type of structure by which the phosphorus can be mobilized to the plant root so that plant can take. In the later picture, you see how they are dipping. This is the three-way interaction, the mycorrhiza is helping. One is the environmental of the soil condition, there is one side is the mycorrhizal fungus and second is the host plate. And there are different type of fungus is working. In the AM species, the most important fungi which I know till note that is glomash, aculospora, gigaspora and also some scutellospora. And but only one thing is the problem, this is exist in the nature on the plants are able to give this type of microorganisms. This aim is present in the plant roots, but we are not able to successfully culture. So, when we and cannot successfully culture, we cannot produce in a very high amount and it is not easily available when there is less mass production, we cannot supply these types of aim to other parts of your area or maybe some outer side. So, that scientifically experiment is going on how we can culture this fungi, very important fungi in outside also their association with the plants in lab. So, this mycorrhiza how they are helping, 
this is a plant root body plant root if you see the aim is incorporating in the cell root cell and they have made some structure like this how they are helping the plant root this is the root here plant root is up to this point but whatever the nutrient is present in this area the plant root is not able to absorb but when there is association with this mycorrhiza they made some finger like structures and they reach up to the point where the nutrients are available so they are help to take these nutrients to the roots so these nutrients are being mobilized with the help of this aim to the plant growth and also see in one experimental condition it is found 80% of the plant phosphorus 25% of the nitrogen 10% of the potassium and 25 and 60% of the zinc and copper can be supplied by this so there is a need of very much reduction of the inorganic fertilizer replication if we can explore this am role in our agriculture system properly especially for the tree species or vegetable and fruit crops you see this is two pictures this side there is no colonization and this side the am colonization and if you see the root here the root is limited up to this root cannot reach here where the zinc is pre present phosphorus and other things but in case of colonization with the am this herboscelus mycorrhiza they made some net type of structure and they can easily take this type of nutrient which are present in some higher distance and they help to mobilize this nutrient to the plant root so when they come to the plant root the plant is able to absorb so they are helping in the mobilization of these nutrients there are a different type of some i fertilizer is also being promoted that is called pgpr plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and there are a different type of mechanism of action they are helping in a different way not only they are helping direct that is the nitrogen fixation phosphorus solubilization potassium solubilization siderophore production and phytohormone there are different type of phytohormones which are also help for the plant growth it may be oxalic acid like iaa it may be ethylene production or the cytokinin there are some indirect role also play this type of pgpr and what are they they produce antibiotic they are produce hydrolytic enzyme on also the expoli saccharide production so this secondary metabolite also help plant in their defense mechanism also so that they can resist some time of insect and disease attack this is the waste decomposer nowadays it is being very much popular in case of organic farming and also in case of integrated nutrient management the waste decomposer is produced by one our national center ncof that is national center of organic farming located in gaziabad it is a consortium it is not a very single one or two type of microorganisms is present it a consortium of different type of microorganisms they are extracted from the desi cow dung it is supposed to tell our indigenous breed of the cow they have some types of different type of microorganisms some bacteria and other things is there which help different types of activities and it is a very long life cycle and if you see the cost only rupees 20 per bottle and this one bottle is sufficient for your farm you can own multiply from your one bottle of this os decomposer to a very high amount so every time it is not necessary you have to purchase from the market also or from the ncoa you can produce a mass production with this helps and we can show how much of we can reduce and if you show that from one bottle 1000 metric ton of organic fertilizer can be produced this is the and next few slides i will show how to you can go for mass production and how to use in your product what is their main role suppose in case of also composting or waste decomposer whenever we giving some rice straw and residue and other things in the crop they take very much time for the decomposition they take three months four months a farmers also have very much less time probably he have some crop residue in his field and he has to cultivate the next crop suppose after rice he is get only one month type to go for the wheat so in that condition what the farmer burning is doing of the rice travels but if the waste decomposer process is helping a very much way to reducing the decomposition time for three months to only 30 to 40 days so if the decomposing done is very easily the farmers get enough time and also they use can this different type of composting and vermi composting also so what is the process of multi multiplication mix 2 kilo jaggery along with 20 100 liter of water open the bottle and put in the solution and also cover a container the os decomposer is ready after 5 days so after 5 days this whatever the microbial consortia present in the os decompose they will multiply why are giving the jaggery 
Jagar is the food of food of the source of food. This is the source of energy. By getting this food, the, they will multiply like anything, and so that within sub five to six days, 200 liter of solution is ready for your application. Only from one bottle. And if you see, this is the quick composting method. If you want to quick composting in your somewhere, you have put too much rice straw, maize straw, and other things is there, and you want to know composting is a very easily process. So mixed one bottle of waste with two kg jaggery in 200 liter. And then spread the organic waste in a plastic sheet, but always try to maintain minimum 60 percent of moisture. If the moisture is less, then definitely whatever our desired activity or goal we not may well. And compost is ready to use after 40 days. So if you say in the same way, whatever the compost, where in case it is take two months, three times time for program decomposition, we have reduced the process. Decomposition is faster, and decomposition is always better with the help of waste decomposer. And if you see, you can also use for the seed treatment. You mix with some 30 gram of jaggery, and along with this jaggery solution, you just make with the seed coating because seeds will not directly attach with this solution. So, when the jaggery solution you make, that will be sticky in nature and that can be easily applied on the seed, and that seed you can apply in the sow. Similarly, you can also use in the foliar spray, and always we are recommending to 1 is to 10 ratio. If you always decompose culture is 1 liter, you is 10 liter. So, 1 is to 10 ratio, it is always advocable also for the foliar spray. So, there are different types of waste paper decomposer, and India, the waste decomposer is being popularized is very much. There is different type of government intervention also we are showing. We have a national biofertilizer development center. We have a central sector NDPB national project on development of biofertilizer. We have different type of ICAR institution all over the India network project of organic farming, which are promoting the growth and culture, and also different type of states laboratory and state agriculture university as also working on the this. And if you see, there are different type of state government marketing federation. So always government is trying to promote this type of fertilizers, biofertilizers, because every year. Government has to spend thousand and thousand crores of rupees for the subsidy of different type of fertilizer production. And even we can reduce 10 to 20 percent of this fertilizer consumption by helping the use of different type of bio fertilizer. Too much money we can save, too much energy we can save, and our soil will be better, our ecosystem will be healthier. This is the different type of fertilizer production, how you gain the culture, then in plugs and you have to go for the multiplication, after multiplication, always quality is very much necessary. Because every time when you are produce this vermicompost or different type of bio fertilizer, if the quality is bad, in the process of some harmful bacteria enter into the process, then it will be very much tough to control. So, always quality is very much assurance. You have to culture specific microbes which you want to apply in the soil and there should not be any contamination with harmful bacteria or fungi. So, this is the different stages, isolation of the microbes from the roots. After that, we have laboratory screening, where the plant grew, we can go for greenhouse screenings. After that, the refinement of inoculants is done, and after that, environmental impact test is very much important. When you are suppose new producing some type of bio fertilizer, what is the role in the environment? Whether it is environment friendly? whether it is a soil friendly or it is not. After that, different type of quality passed only that is we are advocating to use and that is only it is recommended. They are getting the license to sell these bio fertilizers. So, you see this is the mass production culture, how we are producing, the culture is giving shaking condition. After an optimum condition, the population level if you see within 4 to 5 days, they are very fast growing. So, whenever we are mass production in a lab, within 4 to 5 days rhizobium is being ready. Within 5 to 7 days, your spirillum is dizzy and 6 to 7 days, azotobacterium is dizzy. But always we have to make certain culture and we have to contamination, sometimes chance is very high. Otherwise, a pro, there is a some problem because somewhere in a problem, in a suppose a daily condition, we are preparing some type of bio fertilizer and we have to carry this materials to the a far area of the organizational process. So, there is not a cold chain system. Every time we cannot system in the freeze and other things. So, whenever we are taking for in the process, it will take too much time, two months, three months. There will be too much temperature in the heat. So, sometimes whatever the inoculum percentage or whatever the quantity of the inoculum should be present per gram is it is little bit reduced. So, in this condition, their efficacy is not good what we are acting. And that is why, why sometimes farmers are complaining, I have applied the rhizobium, I have applied the PSB, my result is not good. Because Suppose you have some bacteria is needed up to 10 to the power 9 per gram, but if the population is only 10 to the power 3 or 4, 
their role will be limited. So, if everywhere the every remote area of our country there is some good quality infrastructure development has been done so that we can produce this Bharmi different type we have not to carry a long way and the quality will be always assured then the farmers will get the optimum result. This is the products at different type of mass media using that is rhizobium for the rhizobium we are using yeast extract, manatel agar and congor and if you see for azosperilum something others and for the phosphobacteria because of like a growth what is this means media because these are bacteria these are maybe fungi these are always living organisms they are not the dead part we are applying these living organisms in our soil so that they can stimulate some factor within the soil they can fix nitrogen they can solubilize phosphorus and potassium so that plant get sufficient nutrients and yield will be good but when they are living things just like our human body every living organism needs food so you cannot carry these materials without food and this media is providing the food there are different type of media is driven and these provide their multiplication and also for their livings. So, there is carrier materials apart from feed how you carrier because these microbes are very microscopic Maybe one in one bottle if you see the there is some you are carrying one bottle of some micro biofertilizer their actual amount may be less than one ml. So, how you will carry different type of carrier materials are also we are giving so that their quality should be ensured temperature should not rise to very high. So, there is some buffering agent is there. So, that will be cheaper in cost otherwise it cost will be red that should be locally available this carrier material otherwise if you are producing some part you cannot purchase all the things from the market. There should be no toxic chemical so that they will not hamper the growth of the microbes welder handling capacity should be very good and easy to process. This is the example press smart lignite charcoal coconut cell rice arc leaf manure peat this is the different type of carrier materials we are used in the process is the preparation of the packet every time branding is very much important where we are purchasing for our dress for purchasing we our chips or maggi branding is a very much role so all this condition it should be clean dry sterile or plastic or metallic so that our quality should be ensured and it should be not be very easily breakable or water should not entry into the bottles or maybe packet or go out. So, these things you very much care and nowadays lots of industries also coming. So, there is a very bright future for this biofertilizer production especially as in India where organic farming growth is very high and these biofertilizer are an indispensable part of our organic farming. Now, what is the biofertilizer production? What is the polythene bag? What do should be it should be always the name of the manufacturer so that a farmers can go where it has been produced it is produced locally or very high ever name of the product so for which strain number it should be there the crops to which recommended probably a rhizobium is recommended for the crops of legumes and also there is no specificity we cannot apply for other crops maybe cereals method of elocution in which way a farmer should apply it should be go for seed it should be go in the soil it should be the foliar spray date of manufacture is needed because also they are living organisms or you are providing sub food materials we cannot expect that their population will be maintained in an optimum condition for more than 5 years 6 years. So, there is a term life. So, date of manufacture and date of expiry is very much needed also the price full address and storage instruction whether we can store in a fridge in 4 degree or lower temperature otherwise we can store in a shade condition in our house condition. These are very much necessary for a the scientific production of the biofertilizer and for your marketing in the agricultural issues. There are different types of biofertilizer application is there one is seed treatment. In this condition that is the most easiest fast application. Every farmer is going to apply seed he needs putting the seed in the soil. So, he is already planting if we can mix our this biofertilizer along with the seed there is no extra cost. Farmers will going to planting. So, before that we mix in some way one is the process this is the shoot treatment Maybe in the jaggery solution you put this biofertilizer jaggery will be sticky in nature and after that you mix with the soil and some set dry after that you go for planting. So, however, the your biofertilizer you are want to give in your soil within the whole, whole area whole field this biofertilizer has been distributed without giving any extra cost. Similarly, is the set treatment that is mostly for the sugar cane everywhere the western part of the UP and other parts and Maharashtra and other things sugar cane belt is there. And if you see this is a 
very big plastic container, we have given some time of different type of microorganisms and the sets are being deep for 5, 10, 20 minutes and after that this set can be planted in the soil. So, this is one message. Also, the seedling dipling in case of some horticultural crops, in maybe some others of fruits and vegetables, seedling also is important because where we are not directly planting the seed in the field. We are also advertising to different according to your need, according to your crop, according to your location, you have to apply suitable method of this biofertilizer application. There is also process of the soil application. In this condition, why are apply the mixture of biofertilizer plus compost plus soil? So, because biofertilizer, this is very less amount. We are applying only 500 gram, 600 gram, 1 kilo. And we apply this very less amount in one hectare of area, we cannot evenly distribute it. Somewhere it will get more amount and in the some part of our field may not get any biofertilizer. So, what to do? We can mix with some quantity, maybe 10 kilo of soil we have taken. We have also taken 10 kilo of the FOIM or compost and 1 liter. So, when the amount is little bit bulky, 20 kilo, 30 kilo or 50 kilo, then a farmers can easily throw over his field. So, that this biofertilizer reach every corner of the field, not just one part is getting and one part is missing. So, they are also can be sprinkled with water. So, there is lots of process. You can also use a spray, you can also just use by your hand. Similarly, also there are different types of phosphorus solubilizing microarrhagia, you can also use with cow dung and also with the rock phosphate is available because rock phosphate we are always advocating in the field of organic farming. Phosphorus always deficient in the terms of acidic soil and our FOIM and other also they are little bit of phosphorus content is less. So, how to manage phosphorus in our organic farming? Rock phosphate is option which we are generally dugging from the field and directly applying in the field. There is different type of rock phosphate, Musole rock phosphate, Purula rock phosphate is there and if we give some type of our phosphorus solubilizing microarrhagia along with this, then there is a chance of process this easily available phosphorus will be faster. This is Ajola, I have already told. How a farmers can grow? It is a small simple and plastic tick, he can grow this Ajola culture. This multiplication is very high and after that he can apply in man field. It also provide calcium, magnesium, potassium. It is also used for ruminants, poultry, pig and fish. So, they are not only fix the nitrogen and apply in the soil fertility, they also feeding to the our livestock. Then they can multiply very easily within 70 to 20 days. They are very fast growing. So, we have to maintain this type of some type of water and some nutrition is there and harvested azola can be dried and stored. And you see, I have already told within this azola, within this azola species, this bacteria is also is there and this bacteria is called the BGA. The BGA, the azola provides shelter and food to this algae and algae give nitrogen to the azola. So, they are living in symbiosis. So, always we are promoting blue-green algae, they are mainly growing with the azola pinata and this type of azola is very much easily cultivable. You can mass produce it, you can use in a field and there are diversification use, you can use for your livestock, you can use for a fertilizer purpose, soil conditioner and others. This is the azola production. It is a free floating farm, it contains several minerals and also soil health, control yields. This is also different, these are also used as a feed, also livestock, biofertilizer and also different type of use. So, this azola culture is very much needed in case of organic farming, where we cannot apply nitrogenous fertilizer like urea and DAP. This all small, small intervention is helped. It may be giving 20 to 30 kilo nitrogen, but in organic farming even a 20 kilo nitrogen hectare by with very easy cost and cheap method is always advocable to make your farming system a sustainable one. If you see in a small plastic tank, how a farmer is producing the azola. In one hectare, for one hectare lead, we need only 4 feet of this much size. So, we can produce initially the azola in this feet and we can apply the 5 to 10 centimeter of water inoculated with the isola and they are different and within some times this will be ready for our fertilizer application. So, this organic farming we have to always promote the use of isola, but there may be for commercial cultivation, nutrient and nutrient management and other we are promoting the isola and we can use for SSP, but in case of organic farming where we are growing isola organically single superphosphate is prohibited. So, you have to take care of that whatever the azola production procedure is available 
in our public domain, you have to carefully choose for your organic farming. So, we have also different type, we can after 15 to 10 days, the thick layer of azola will develop to 100 to 50 kilo. So, multiplication varies right. Harvest two third you can use in the rice field. So, when everywhere when you grow or rice, there is some standing water. If the standing is water is there and we are applying these uh, azola in the rice field, it will multiply and cover the whole field. So, it will give a too much nutrient fixes and nitrogen to the rice and after the rice harvesting when the feed will be dried, it will also generate lots of biomass. This biomass gives lots of micronutrients also and also the soil conditioner. They improve the soil physical structure also soil, water holding capacity of the soil. So, they not only help into provide of some nutrients, they also help as a soil conditioner. This is the azola application you see, how we are feeding the different, we are giving to feed, we are giving to goat, they are also we are giving to our maybe your poultry or ruminants and if you see this also can does a green manure, it is a livestock feed and dual cropping. Dual cropping mean azola can grow along with rice. After 7 to 10 days of transplantation we are giving, so then this azola can decompose and giving nitrogen to the fixed nitrogen. So, rice is growing, azola is growing, but azola is not disturbing the rice but it is helping the nitrogen by the nitrogen fixation. And also after rice growth, when this azola decayed matter is coming to the soil, the soil condition is good. So, the next crop growth and yield will be also better. We have to see our things, which way we should grow. Because in organic farming, we cannot use our inorganic fertilizer, we cannot use urea and other things. So, always we have to think different type of innovative ideas, how we can manage our organic source of nutrients in a organic farming field. There may be different organic source, we are applying FOIM, cow dung, pig manure, goat manure, compost, vermicompost. But everywhere I tell for giving 100 kilo nitrogen for a crop like tomato, you have to apply 20 ton of FOIM. First, production of 20 ton of FOIM is very tough, every time you will not get so much compost in your area. Similarly, the 20 ton carry if you want to grow in some hilly areas or some area where maybe tractor and other things is not providing. So, you carry transportation is very tough, transportation is very costly. So, that is why there is some demerits of organic farming, people do not want to go for organic farming in their farm. But in that condition, biofertilizer play a very prominent role because they are very easy to manage, only 500 ml or 1 liter is sufficient for 1 hectare. So, cost is less and you need not so much cheap labor and they are easily multipliable in your feed. So, by fertilizer acts as a supplemented to the chemical fertilizer, they are very cost friendly, Matlab their cost is very much less and if you see, they can also decrease the consumption of such fertilizer, they provide atmospheric nitrogen directly to the plants, they aid in not only giving the nitrogen, they are also helping solubilization and mineralization of other micronutrient and potassium and phosphorus. If you, they are also provide the availability increase for, for hormones, vitamins and other growth promoting substances. They, they have a multi-dimensional role and on an average they are also enhancing the yield by 10 to 20 percent. This is very much necessary. And if you see they also help in the multiplication and the survival of the microbial, they control some soil bacteria. So, they also help as a defense mechanism of the plant, they also help the soil structure I have told and also eco-friendly in nature and they are pollution free. So, whenever we are applying this type of things, we have to also take care of our environment. If you apply only fertilizer, fertilizer and other things, there may be some ecosystem problems. There may be problem of the microbial population in the soil, but this bio fertilizer always eco friendly, environment friendly, they help in the soil balance maintain, they are providing the nutrients, they are also providing too much of micronutrients, they also help in the mobilization and solubilization of some nutrients, some antibiotics, some growth hormones and also act as the defense mechanism, but there are some limitations. Limitation may be you cannot 100 percent replace with or organic mineral with the bio fertilizer. You, these are complementary in nature, you have to apply some of FOM and other things, apart from you can use the microorganisms. They result in 20 to 30 percent crop production, you cannot tell our 100 percent enhancement should be there, but a 20 percent enhancement in organic condition with the help of this bio fertilizer is immense. Also, it is very much specific, some one species of rhizobium you can use for pea, that species cannot be used for black gram. 
Similarly, what is the rhizobium you can use for legume, you cannot use for your other crops like cereal. So, you have to take, if the expose for a long time, I have already gold, your container should be good, it should be in a good condition, you should not harvest in a for a very high much time. So, that location specific biofertilizer industry development should be there, we should be used within a specific time period, you cannot store for 5 years, 6 years. So, there may be some problem, but with the expansion of the area organic farming and when the different type of infrastructure and our industry will come, there are lots of we can produce within the specific area, we have not to travel to very high to collect this biofertilizer. So, there is a very better chance and also this depend on the soil, for their optimum role moisture conditions be there, fertilizer and other things. So, every time organic farming, we should not go for one, one of source, we have to think in the holistic approach, we have to apply organic manure, other manures, green manure, green limb manure, vermicompost, apart from that, we should also advocate the use of biofertilizer for a sustainable organic farming for our future generation. Thank you.